There are few places on Earth as powerful and mysterious as the open oceans. While they may appear featureless on the surface, mighty currents underneath are responsible for circulating heat and driving weather patterns across the globe. One of the largest of these currents is the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, also known as the AMOC. This current continuously moves warm water northward along the Gulf Stream, playing a crucial role in European and North American climate. Despite the strength of the AMOC, there are concerns that a warmer climate could disrupt the forces driving it, potentially weakening or causing a total shutdown of the system. Welcome back to another episode of Tipping Points. The main feature that drives all ocean circulation is a difference in water densities. Factors like salinity and temperature affect the density of water, with cold water being denser than warm and salty water being denser than fresh. In the case of the AMOC, it starts with a west flowing current moving away from the western coast of Africa. This water heats up from being near the equator and then heads northeast to Europe in the famous Gulf Stream, carrying all this heat northward. As it reaches the cooler Arctic latitudes, the water loses most of its heat, increasing in density and sinking into the deep ocean near Greenland. This cold, salty water then flows back the way it came, heading south towards Africa again before being upwelled and brought back to the surface, completing the circuit. It can take water anywhere from 300 to 3600 years to complete one lap around the AMOC. This makes it not only a great transporter of heat, but also effective at sequestering carbon, keeping carbon in the deep ocean for hundreds or thousands of years. But as temperatures begin to rise and ice sheets melt, it starts to affect the physics driving ocean currents. One region in the Atlantic that has experienced a rapid increase in melting is the Greenland ice sheet. Research on Greenland ice cores have found that melting intensity in central West Greenland has increased 575% compared to pre-industrial levels as a result of a warmer planet. All of this fresh meltwater flows directly into the Atlantic Ocean, causing the water to drop in salt content and therefore drop in density. Furthermore, as this region heats up, the water flowing north is not cooling as much as it used to. This makes the water even less dense, slowing the amount that sinks into the deep ocean. With less water sinking, the conveyor belt of the AMOC starts to slow down, which has already weakened it by around 15% since 1950. Now the critical question is, will this be enough to stop the AMOC and push it past its tipping point? Modern models of the AMOC portray this tipping point as what's known as a bifurcation point. This is the point where a system parameter, in this case freshwater input, crosses a barrier that shifts the system towards a new equilibrium, similar to the bistable ecosystem that we covered in the Amazon video. As freshwater input rises and sufficiently slows circulation, the old system will collapse and form a new system that we cannot necessarily foresee. The good news is that this shift is highly dependent on how quickly the freshwater input changes. Studies using detailed climate modeling have shown that the AMOC weakens less when the meltwater input changes slowly as opposed to it melting all at once. This delayed tipping, known as the slow passage effect, means that it is unlikely that we will see a total shutdown of the AMOC at any point in the near future. It will still continue to weaken as long as there is melting ice sheets and rising temperatures, but it will also allow time for humanity to react and adapt. Only through aggressive emissions reductions and carbon sequestration can we prevent the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation from crossing the system's tipping point. Thanks for sticking around to the end. Comment your thoughts on the video or even suggest the topic you'd like to see in a future episode. If you enjoyed this, make sure to like, subscribe, and share to support Planet Zero. I'll see you next time.